But now, let's talk about Pajarito versus Rob. We saw Rob earlier, of course. Not a Rob main, though, a Snake main. And Pajarito, an amazing inkling. And so I'm excited to see what these two got cooking up here. Tell me a little bit about this matchup. Yeah, so this matchup, actually one of Snake's worst matchups, but not something you see very often, obviously, right? Inkling, not a character you see very commonly. You see it in the Midwest, though, because players like Pajarito, like Colorado, apologies, I can't roll my R's, so that one's gonna sound a little <laughs> bit weird, but you do say it with the rolled R. I was actually his pool captain at LMBM, so... Oh, uh, you know, I've seen this man play, he's very talented. We've seen Rob play here on stream earlier as well, and... The real question is, just how used to, uh, to dealing with this initial dash are you, which invalidates so many of the nest setups that Snake is known for. Yeah, look at that though. Ooh, the down tilt to the up smash. Beautiful call out on the tech chase. And now Rob leading away with some pretty good damage. But you know what? Pajarito keeping it nice and even. But that run up for the F tilt to confirm it. Love to see it from Rob. Missing on the Nikita, but it don't matter. Hold we get on, the grab. This is huge. Wow, we went for the down smash regen. You're that close to ledge. You get yep. F tilt. And the hurt box shift will push them off stage. That'll and then pop them vertical again. And and it'll chew combo oh, at 90% and up there. So had the kill confirmed, but Rob not looking for it. It's still able to lock it down though. And now lock down the nest on defense, doing a great job playing around position. The platform here, forcing this attack from mid range and ink huge too. As is that up throw up air. Snake has a very wide up throw up air percent because there's frame four air dodge, but also, because of ink, right, you do a lot of extra damage to yourself in these grenade trades. He forces the unfavorable trade way more than the rest of the cast. Yeah, I will say I love how he's placing these grenades, keeping it on top of those plats, make it scary to go ahead and full hop over or popping it down on the ground. That way you can't just roll her on through. Now, lock him off stage and look at that. The grin or sorry, the mortar coming through and securing some damage. Dude, the C42. Mm -hmm. Now the C4, my friend, just so freaking good at finding these stocks, right? Creating pressure, taking away a platform, or just, hey, you don't buffer an option at, or you panic just a little bit, guess what? You're gonna just get stickied and then you just have to run away. You have to just take 30, 40% off a random interaction at minimum. I love the slide off there with that B-reverse conserving the momentum. Such a powerful option around platform with Snake and really just locking it down, willing to not approach, playing this defensive game with the lead like you have since Brawl. And so far, Pajarito just hasn't had an answer to it. Yeah, and Paha really trying to force the issue. Now, that is the scary thing, though. Once you start to force the issue, that's the moment where you get pot popped up by a stray grenade, and all of a sudden, you die so early. But you know what? Finds the down tilt. Might be able to get this edge guard. No, not quite. The mispositioning. You hate to see it. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, the mispositioning. Not where you want to be. Try to cover platform with back here. But what a beautiful empty hop from Pajarito to juke out the grenade and the coverage finding the stock regardless, despite how active back air is. Up throw, up air again, Yin. What a nice way to close it out. And now one stock away. Yeah, frame four air dodge is a huge detriment against Pajarito, especially since that up air, it hits just low enough for, even if you pull grenade, it's typically not popping it. So Rob really struggling to hold on to those stocks once he gets grabbed at those percent. Still tossing those grenades, locking it down. As you said, that brawl style of play, but getting a little aggressive there. That was crazy that he read the tech chase with the down smash there, I for sure thought he was going to go for an up tilt because Inkling Ink kind of can struggle to get down even with the large stage and up tilt if you're not expecting the DI because you know Rob looks for the up, down smash, looks for these F tilts a lot, well, he might just die. Ooh, and look at that forward throw. Quick snatch you up and you are gone. I don't want to see you again, you little squid. Have a nice flight. That being said, that was also a DI mix on that forward throw as well. Beautiful mm -hmm. stuff from Rob. Just quick reaction, right? You saw the no pummel instant throw. Said, hey, I'm going to catch you slipping on this DI. You're, if you die, right, yeah, you survive. But you're not going to. And here at 155, I've, you're actually past the percent where down throw up tilt would have confirmed anyways. You were at ledge, so you had down throw F tilt. That grab was death seven ways to Sunday. But I appreciate Rob showing us the rarest one. Yeah, look at that. Just the ink gun to go ahead, lock and shield. If it hits, then you know what? You got some ink and a little bit of damage on them, which is, uh, of course, very nice for those of you who don't know that ink adds extra damage per hit, and so amazing damage output for but, Inkling. And it's not just per Inkling's hits, though. It's a per them getting hit, right? Huge in this matchup where C4, Grenade, are constant factors where Sting might be either hitting themselves or yep. trading out and taking damage from their own moves. That F smash comes out three quarters of a second in, frame 45, but in frame three, charge release. So once you start charging it, you can react and it, there's nothing they can do. 
It's just an amazing kill tool. Kill so early, but it don't matter right now as Pajarito going ahead and playing that defensive game right alongside Rob using a lot of these splat bombs. The issue is, you know what? Rob, he doesn't have to recharge on those grenades. Pajarito, though, does have to recharge on ink as needs. Yeah, but you can only have those two nades out at once, right? That is the limiting factor. Er, Snake can control a lot of different space, but his resources are still finite, just in a different way. 158, yep. though, now you just can't get grabbed at all. And that's something that with Roller on Shield, you're going to set yourself up for, right? You have to be aware of how to avoid that, and just Pajarito hasn't had that answer yet. Yeah, and now only 88% on deck. Snake is a heavy, heavy boy, so he'll be living quite a while. But you know what? That grenade pop put a lot of damage off that combo. 136. Still, though, good trades for Rob. He got the instant Z catch there into the B reverse, which drops the grenade you're holding as an item, and then was able to find the downer after it, using the B reverse to cross up. It was so smart in the corner. And now just locking it down in neutral, too. Willing to hold grenade on shield, because at that point, you hit the shield as Pajarito. You get hit, and then I'll start put the Ink dealing extra damage with the C4, even still the explosion yourself gonna do it anyways. And now we've got the in-game crowd cheering for Rob to lock this one down. Look at that, the up tilt pushing that shield just far enough away so Pajarito couldn't really get a good punish there. And now 116, this is getting to scary percent ranges where you might be getting a grab to down throw and you know, you might be sleeping for a little bit longer than just a quick nap. I like, I like the momentum mix up there to just stall with the Nikita, shut down all your forward momentum from the aerial immediately, and just create some pressure. The Nikita cancels are something we really haven't seen come out at all from Rob, and it's something he has left in the tank should he want to use it, should Pajarito start to make some adjustments. But right now, he can just use it as an edge guarding tool because Pajarito doesn't have a hitbox. He doesn't have any way to contest that and is forced into its lane. And now down a full stock. Pajarito, though, starting to light it up. 75% combo, and that is lovely, lovely damage. Looking for the edge guard, but unable to secure it. Of course, trying to get that Cypher hit. And yeah, I was going to say, that Cypher hit, as you mentioned, huge reversal potential there from Rob because he just air dodged off early, called it out, called out the swing, and instead of getting his hit off his Cypher potentially or just taking some damage, instead, he hit you for it. And he got back on stage, contest free, and unfortunate oh. just missed. Getting caught at the wrong angle. PS2 can be a little awkward because it's got the slope, oped wall, and the ceiling. And just Pajarito now going down 2-0. Rob, very close to locking this setup in one of the hardest matchups for his own main. I will say, it looks like he wouldn't have made it anyways. Probably what he needed to do there, and I don't know if he had the roller at that point, but pop the roller, get the extra jump, because look, even oh, as yeah. he starts to get there, it still like starts diving back down even before he starts to pineapple. You're right. He just I what's weird though is he didn't double jump before that too. He just had his normal double jump as well. It looked like maybe he panicked or thought that there was a thought Yeah, well, I was, okay, he did use it. Thank you. Production corrected me on that. He did use his double jump. Um, apologies for missing that one, but the down air they're coming out uh, just trying to find some safe, quick pressure, but just not able to. Pajarito already racking up a different scenario than games one and two, right? This is the first lead he's really had all set long, but even still, it's a very fragile one. Yeah, as you said, very fragile and already broken. Not much ink in the tank either, which can become a big issue if they're really trying to push it here. Rob sending out the Nikita just to secure a little bit of control, but look at that, the Splat Bomb getting some nice damage and Rob all inked up. Down till the grenade, not gonna find too much more, but I like the pressure idea there from Pajarito, right? He was trying to pick a grenade into an up air, but just Rob knowing the timing to get out of that one, taking the Cypher wrecking hit off the back here, knowing one kill and the air dodge. Beautiful job pushing his resources to his limit, keeping his mix-ups flexible, but up throw up air, gonna pick up the read from pa and the stock from Pajarito, and now he finally has a stock lead in the set. Yeah, Pajarito starting to fill himself a little bit, and now only 76%. We're seeing him stall as well, but you know what? Might be better for Rob as those grenades have been doing a lot of chip damage. Look at that, already up by 20-30% since the dropping the stock. Yeah, I like the ink there, right? Just pressure on the nades, disrupt that nest, and give yourself the extra flexibility of where to work. Don't let Snake lane you with these platforms and basically create a wall that forces you into one route to approach him. Great job with the patience to avoid the down air, avoid the jab. Such fast options. 
importance for this character in the CQC range. And Pajarito now is finally starting to play around Snake's kit, finally starting to disrupt these nests and show you why this matchup can be so hard for Snake. Nikita, though, really trying to snuff it out, but that, uh, that splat bomb to go ahead and help get onto that ledge. 175, this is crazy hypersense against Snake, and oh my gosh, not able to find the conversion. That would have been so clean. Looking for the down, it was just a crazy idea confidence-wise. I leads to a lot, but just missing it because of how precise the hitbox is. Could have taken some guaranteed damage, and we'll see if it comes back to bite Pajarito, but now potentially by up 136 and a stock. If he can just convert the edge or, or the ledge trap, gonna lock you down, trap the landing on platform with the up smash, and now one stock away from continuing his run in this tournament. Look at that splat gun going ahead, coming through, locking down the shield a little bit longer, but burning a lot of ink in the process. And now Rob getting aggressive to try to force him to burn those resources, but ultimately just allowing Pajarito to come out on top of that scenario. Again, he's looking for a dash attack. You're now trying to find pressure. We've seen some crazy setups. I, if you drift back there instead of trying to contest that great grenade like Pajarito did, which is very smart because you drift away, that forward area is going to come in swinging and kill you. Ooh, Rob with a crazy setup idea that could have just found his way back into this game, but Pajarito playing discipline and keeping this lead going. He's trying desperately to force this game forward. Look at that, that back air, basically a sword able to zone him out too. And you know what? We might be seeing a force to game four, as you said, as he is now inking him up. Rob, taking a second to think on it. You know what? Just take it, right? I guess, like, you're yeah. trying to get your ink. I wonder if he took that because he was worried about exactly that up throw up air that just happened. Yeah. And, and he was trying to get out of percent range. However, right at 120, you are near the end of it. However, Snake is heavy and has a frame for air dodge, right? So that percent range is one of the widest in the entire game for the kill confirmed. So Rob, unfortunately, just not able to get out of that one just yet. The way Pajarito picked up, just like, wasn't looking for the confirm off the roller immediately, but just looked for the panic option afterwards, because you're expecting to try and dodge something, was just so disciplined, right? That level of discipline is what we didn't see in games one and two, but now you have to go to Bob's counter pick, and he's going to take you to a small stage with a center platform. And that is a scary thing against Snake, as you're already seeing these grenades, you pop them on top of that middle platform, the C4 as well, and it controls so much of the stage. There's a reason why this is typically one of the most favorite, if not the most favorite stage for Snake. And Inkling, right, is a character that can run away initial dash a lot, right, dodges under the traps and control the pace of the game against Snake very well. But on here on Smashville, the smaller stage size, right, Snake we think of as a zoner, but he has great great CQC buttons, and Inkl it, the small size takes away Inkling's ability to abuse that initial dash nearly as much. Uch, uch. And then you just get caught at the end of it by that C4 because you can never initial dash not into an explosive. Yes, ma'am, and look at that that combo. Not quite able to get the Nair kicks, but you know what? Don't matter. Still 43% and only at 81. This is a perfect place for Snake as he could just start trading with grenades to punish those close quarter co combat that Pajarito is going to try to employ at times. Yeah, and um, the pressure here from Bob has just been so disciplined, right? He's willing to just sit in the corner, lob a nade, and force you low. And then he's got C4, so you have to stop under the platform, lock yourself up into a crouch or something to avoid the nade that's about to explode above your head, and then he can just dash attack you to reset the situation, right? It's been his recipe one, two, three times um, to control stage, and finally Pajarito dislodging him. Yeah, but gets the up throw, up air too. Wow, that's crazy, especially considering Smashville's roof being a little bit taller. And 136 with Rage too, right? Like, that was the very, very end of the percent. So, in front, as to that, he find it. It may not have even been true there, but again, that frame four air dodge helping in Oodles. Now that center plot gonna help Inkling in turn, right? Because of those juggle extensions that you get on this stage, Snake a character that's probably most vulnerable when forced to go high as well. Oh, and that is going to be a problem. you got to be careful if you're going to miss that recovery. And now Rob up a full stock and almost lapping them in percent. Just a little bit more grenade play. But you know what? It's coming back to burn him just a little bit. Now it's 64. And that second stock was beautiful from Rob. And now just like the pressure again. Locking down these walls. Jumping in with the reverse grenade. Because now that you're up, 
even though you're inked, you're okay taking the trade because every percent you get, well, that's just free percent on you. You're already at kill percent. You're already in up throw up air range. So as long as you trade, your Pajarito's losing every single one until the stock counts even again. Now look at that, that grenade, we saw it a lot in game one, and now it's coming through again for Rob to go ahead and stop the roller, and now almost no ink in play. Dude, that down smash, that's gonna be it. The dis frame disparity between frame six and frame 22 on the first and second hit is absolutely absurd. That down smash right, sending at the Sakurai angle as well, so incredibly strong. I'm really excited to take a look at the second stock specifically from Rob here, here, here because again, watch the... Watch this is right. He puts the C4 on platform, yep. jumps back to ledge, and Nikita, you can cancel it immediately. So you force them to go high. They're worried of the Nikita going low, but really what they need to do is ride the wall. Because once you're here, you can either slingshot or full momentum up air, as he did. And even though he fast fell it, right, hey, to only cover part of platform, you can just slingshot that and cover yep. the full one. And it's a beautiful ledge drop on reaction that's only possible because of the small stage size here. I think that is the beauty of a lot of Rob's play, and we also saw it in that third stock where you mentioned that down smash. Even if disregarding the frame changes of that, he also pops the grenade right here, knows that he has it, and so even if this whiffs, and he he won't get but that big punish. Again, Yin, look at this though. Look at where he gets this grab, right? It's right at the ledge here. That's that F tilt percent I was yep. talking about where it'll push you off and kill you. However, Rob doesn't even need it. He's worried Inkling with a small hurt box. That is one of the very few characters in the game that can be a little finicky. So he recognizes, hey, you're not going to roll out because you're aware of the down smash. But guess what? It still covers you regardless. Even if yep. it doesn't, I got grenade back here and that strong hit's going to do it anyways. But speaking of doing it, my friends, it's time to pass it off for some other folks oh, to yeah. do it here on the mic. But Yin... I know you've been Yin, and I've been Ritual, <laughs> and you can find me below at Ritual Cast. Yin, where can they find you? Down at Yin Cast on Twitter, and you know what? Shout out to House of 3K again. The absolute mm -hmm. goats of production. If you like what you see, go follow them on a House of 3K Twitter as well. Actually, Devin 3000, right? On Twitter, so. yes, and uh, House of 3000 on Blue Sky. But until next time, folks, don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back with Top 16 Action, brought to you by Emma and Finesse. Have a good one, folks. Oh, 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 oh.